All right, welcome to another segment of Bujang and Brok. I'm Ryan, your host, and today we have a special guest called Jason Lu, Head of Strategy Consultant from The Makeover Guys. Now, one interesting thing about them is that they have helped thousands of clients to decorate their homes since 2015. And we all know that the interior design costs can be up to hundreds of thousands. So don't worry, today we're going to have an expert today, Jason. Welcome to the show. Hello, guys. Thank you very much, Ryan. Wow, such an official introduction, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks uh, thank for you. inviting us. It's great to have you here today. So, Jason, actually the <laughs> brand name, the Makeover Guys, uh, sounds quite special. Is it really a bunch of guys who happen to be very good with makeup? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what do you guys do? Okay, let, let me give you a simple analogy. A lot of people that think, yeah, design. Actually, in fact, right, a lot of people make up contractor interior design and makeover, which this, this term might pop up very recently, that makes mm. everything together. Is that, yeah, it's the same. I just wanted to do up my house nicely. In yeah. summary, then they categorize everything as if it's same. Lah. So a quick one, basically, if you're talking about interior design, I would say generally, it is a very bespoke, customized service. So basically, right, if you engage interior designers, one of the common traits like, is that there would try to understand your lifestyle first. Mm. They will talk to you, they say, okay, Ryan, uh, what, what do you like? You know, is there any any particular uh, design style that you, you, you enjoy? Uh, and then how's your lifestyle like? You know, do you like cooking or what's your hobby? They will try to understand you first before straight away going to a design. So that, mm -hmm. that is a very, I would say a very luxury services. Like, before talking about makeover, but the other end, which is contractor, you know, contract, because a lot of Malaysian, especially, if you ask your friends, yeah, I got my contract, I mean, my my idea to design my house very cheap, very nice. In mm -hmm. fact, I would say, like, based on my experience, easily more than 80 or 90% of them, they are not engaging interior designers. designers. It's mm -hmm. mainly just contractor, which, which with a bit of downloaded images as references from Pinterest, mm -hmm. all this. And then people mis misunderstand it. They thought that that one is ID. So contractors mm. focus on on a lot of technical technical stuff. They can do a lot of like, for example, plastering, uh, your floorings or kitchen cabinet cabinetries and stuff like that. They are very technical based. But right? when it comes to understand your lifestyle, you have to give them instruction. They will ask you, so what do you want to do? Ah, uh? how long? Ah, uh? so it, it's it's mm. very technical based. Then makeover suddenly just pop up like like. What, what is it, makeover guys? And, and what is makeover? This, what does it mean? Basically, it's very hard to define if you ask me. I would mm -hmm. say if you wanted to put in to the, the horizon of the, the whole renovation industry, I would say some somewhere in the middle. So we are sort of like a, a very budgeted and very guided way uh, to help you spice up the space. But the major difference of ID and all this stuff, right? Our, I mean, this term, I mean, at least in our company's perspective, we start off with a very, very niche need. It is mm. just for investment. You guys do for investment, but not uh, for own sake? Uh, I, I would say we can. Uh, this, this question is very, very tricky. But I would say that our process, right, the whole product is designed to help investors. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not really for own stay people because the process, when you go through it, right, for own state, you might you you find you might find it a bit rigid. Hey, how come? Uh, how come? You know they don't really talk to me. You know when they don't really understand. I want to do this. Why cannot one? They will they will advise me to save money. Don't do this. Why is that? Because mm -hmm. investor per perspective is just I want to make it so that it's just just right. No, not overly done so that I can you know attract my tenant so that they, they are comfortable. I can get my rental. That's it. So it's very different. Okay. So how about those people out there? There. Also, no matter what, they prefer to do it themselves. So, you know, what, what, what's your thoughts about this? Uh, wouldn't it make sense too for them because they want to save the cost? Well, this one, uh, I think it's a billion dollar question. I, 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 <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Why is that? Because, because especially youngsters like us, right? I'm not at all uh, youngsters, right? We always you know, have this thought of like, you know, we do it ourselves, then we, yeah. you know, we can save a lot of money, right? Uh, when it comes to cost comparison, I'll be very honest to you. Anything, anything in this world, when you mm. do it yourself, when you yeah. pull out that card, right? Okay, I do it myself. Uh, it will be a, 
definitely cheaper. Mm-hmm. It was definitely cheaper. But one thing, uh, based on my experience, is that one thing we need to take note. Uh, not everybody, when they use this DIY approaches, right? This approach, right, I would say their time cost is very different. Mm-hmm. A lot of people they, they they missed out. You know, for example, I can cook my own noodle. Why do I need to go to a restaurant and eat? Mm-hmm. Right. So Makes basically, sense. yeah, it, it, it is, it is very, <laughs> especially for youngsters, uh, for youngsters, maybe students, I got no, I, I don't have many things to do. You know, yeah. then your time cost is relatively lower. So for, yeah. for your own DIY, right, it, it makes sense. But for certain people, for example, if let's say you're an investor, investor, and then you have your, maybe your position in, in the company is somewhat in a senior post, like maybe a, a manager, senior manager, something like that. Your hourly, hourly rate, right, it's so expensive. So that's why I would say for DIY, this is the first thing, time cost. But one thing, the other thing that I, I realized a lot of people uh, they, they missed out uh, is another element. Would you want to know? Sure. What, what element is that? You make me sound very curious already. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this, is, this is a very surprising finding. Uh. This, this, this is just my own, more own experience because I used to deal with a lot of clients out there. So I realized right, a lot of DIY uh, approaches because some of the clients they DIY before or sometimes they do halfway then they look for professional right, they, they yeah. do us and stuff like that uh-huh. one thing it is not measurable in monetary terms it's it, it's the whole thing that affect their relationship I'm not sure have you heard of this term right if you want to test up and see before marriage right please go for a longer time frame uh, holiday with your girlfriend or your partner oh, then you'll realize you take out a lot of the truth, like, oh, when you stay together for such a long time, wow, you know the, you know whether you can get along with each other or not. Same goes to renovation because it's a very, it's a very lengthy process, right? Especially mm. DIY. You know, you and your partner sometimes, hey, I don't want to do this, la. I, I like it, la. why you don't want to put it? Oh, I tell you a lot of possible arguments. Uh, and I've, I've seen some of the stories, which is, it doesn't end up good. Lah. Yeah, especially when the people, I think when we are not meant to be in that creative industry, suddenly we want to do and participate the doing up the design on our own. So I guess it's not that easy and it's not that it's something often that you do until you're so good at it, right? People don't decorate their house every year, right? So yeah. now, now next question I wonder is, is it possible for people to just do a certain part of their house just to save their costs? In these particular questions, right, I would say it really depends. First thing that I would need to ask, normally I, would, I like to ask questions because I don't, I can't jump into a conclusion. So I yeah. would first ask, need to ask is that, so what's your intention first? When you buy your first home, are you staying in or are you not? Or are you rent, renting it out? Is, is it an investment product or is it, it's different? Hmm. Which one are you referring to? Then I can, maybe I can share a bit more thoughts. Maybe a situation whereby this couple just uh, used up almost 90% of their saving. They left like 10% only. So they they still haven't done up their, you know, they haven't do their marriage celebration. <laughs> so they are in between, uh, across like, oh, should I decorate my house properly or should I focus my other priorities? So that is, okay. I believe it's much more a bit of own day usage. La. Right, there's mm. a couple of married, just staying in. Uh. My, my thing is like this. Uh, if you ask older generation, right, I see a trend like this now. And, and it's also, it is also why the, I mean, the makeover concept just, just started to boom. Uh, mm. it, it wasn't really popular in maybe like 20 years ago or 15 years ago. Really, mm. it, you seldom heard of this term makeover or staging, things like that. No, why mm. is that? Because if you talk about that time, right, our parents' time, you know, uh, people who are much more baby boomers, uh, much more senior, their life uh, uh, life goal is very different for them, right? And they, they used to settle at one place. This is my home and that will be my only place. I'll be mm-hmm. here until, you know, I, I pass away. <laughs> so it's mm-hmm. basically, th- this is the place. And same goes to career. So even for career, right? It's like, you, you seldom see career hopping. It, it's like, uh, it's very common to you you, I mean, to work in one company, the same company for more than five years, ten years, and they would have that those kind of award, right? Like long service award. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't think it's very common nowadays because when you see youngsters, right? Just now you also mentioned, I believe you have that also, right? <laughs> so basically, mm. right, get married. A lot of time, a lot of times, right? Youngsters they would start to have this uh, thought process of like, 
I wanted to enjoy things now. I, I wanted to, you know, spend on things that can create memories. I want I to go like and explore. Instant, instant gratification, that kind of thing. Like, I want to drink Starbucks, I drink now. <laughs> yeah, lo, right? If you ask uncle, hey, no, la, okay, no la, you need to save more money, then maybe retirement, you got enough money to drink Starbucks, things like that. Uh, but uh, just, uh, we want it now. We want to enjoy. We are being, uh, you know, educating. I mean, the education is teaching us to, to be, be ourselves and get what you want, live the life that you want. So YOLO, I mean, in general, a lot of people like this. That's why mm -hmm. you can see a lot of couples, right? They don't spend huge amount of money inside. And, and I also don't recommend that. I would mm -hmm. recommend you to just furnish up, I would say, essential areas. For example, mm -hmm. for example, if let's say the couples, right? You know, especially young couples, some, sometimes some of the couples, they don't really want to cook. I mean, they don't really cook. Uh, I mean, both, especially a lot of couples nowadays are working. Both of them are uh, income earners. Easy, so yeah, basically, yeah, mm. yeah but surprisingly, right? Yeah, but surprisingly, a lot of ladies, right? I still want to go out the kitchen, but the kitchen is for show. Sure, really. yeah. <laughs> but they're not using <laughs> it. They're not using it. So I would say really, really focus on essential areas. Your bedroom. Mm. You are definitely you're you 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 sleeping, right? You're resting, you're recharging. So uh, that is the area that you need to focus. And mm. then kitchen, it depends uh, whether you know you guys cook. And then even the living room definition change. I, I don't know about about everyone. Some some of the youngsters, even my friends, they don't really spend too much time in living room nowadays. I don't just in bed looking at their phone and their laptop. That so you can me, consider like people don't buy tv also right they kind of use their <laughs> smartphone <laughs> right it's already to the extent where tv became a decoration <laughs> it's a wall <laughs> decoration i mean to me like, at least to me uh. i so, think it's useful only when guests come la, you know got people keep coming every week if yeah you don't they have put on some random shows this is that let let let, no, let, let it run. a background <laughs> voice when you pay attention to it also it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah yeah so i would say don't spend too much because even our career wise we don't know what will happen in the mm. next two years, you might change job, you might relocate to, to some other countries, which is very common nowadays. And 20 years ago, you don't see that. You are in Kapong, for example, you stay in Kapong, you're in Sabah, Sarawak, you're, you're always stuck in that area. But nowadays, mm. mobility is, is there. Uh, we don't spend too much money. And my advice is not to, especially for young people like us, because you still want to explore the world, right? Yeah. All right, after this, I'll be asking Jason more questions about house decoration. So we'll be right back after the break. All right, and we're back here with Jason, our expert of the day, to talk about how to decorate your home. All right, Jason, so let's take one section of the house, for example, okay? What would you recommend to put in the living room to make it complete? Uh, beautiful yet doesn't break the bank at the same time. Uh, my answers might not be ideally like answering for er the ans the ideal answers for everyone. Why is mm -hmm. that? Because uh, our approach when we talk about makeover, it's it's very much just focused on the investment perspective. Okay, so mm -hmm. maybe for own state it might tweak a bit lah. But for investment perspective, how do we fit in the space? Uh, first thing we always look at uh functionality. Functionality is is, is the key lah. It's the first thing that means uh, let's say if I am a tenant or a person who wants to stay in a house, I go to a living room, what would I expect to do there in that area? Watch TV, right? For example. Watch TV, read yeah. book, look read book, my, sitting, look yeah, just the racks mm. or a coffee table so that you can hang your legs, you know, just just just, just relax. So that uh. is the place, right? So with that in mind, right, then you put in what? You see, it's pretty straightforward. The answer is already there. A sofa, and then a coffee table, and then mm -hmm. a TV cabinet, and then a TV, that's mm -hmm. it. What uh, what's the range of the sofa that you usually think that is average? Okay lah, not too expensive, but not, you know, or it's a good price to buy. What what you have come across quite a lot of this kind of costing, right? If the audience want to know what what would be the price that you think is okay for you? Okay, again, I separate into two. Uh, you see, I need to split my my personality into two. With really. it, investment uh -huh. wise, uh, we would do it depending on the rental rates. I'll give you an example. Uh, a lot of investors, right? I imagine investors are doing business. I have a unit I want to rent it out. They get rental in return, a business. Imagine I put it into a, a, a coffee shop analogy. A lot of investors, right? Their mindset is that I want to have good tenant. I want to have very high rental. That means mm. that they wanted to expect to sell, let's say their coffee yeah, at the price of Starbucks coffee price, mm -hmm. like 17, 18 bucks. But the thing is that 
in on the other end, right, when they come to spend spending right, and buying things and furnishing, right, they always think, ah, never mind lah. I put something like uh, those coffee sh- co- coffee shop ah, those 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 Chin Chai selling two three ringgit kind of coffee setup. You see, that's a discrepancy. That if let's say you're a customer, right, would you pay seventeen bucks in a coffee shop? No, because I I'm paying, I'm paying you seventeen bucks. Hello, seventeen bucks, man. I am expecting some nice ambience. Even the cup is what eco friendly, whatever stuff. So it's it, you have certain expectation. So for for this investment perspective, right? If let's say your three bader, your three bader, your rental is thousand, thousand plus. I call it we call it the mass market. That means normal people can afford. It's not something expensive. Then I would see a sofa that is eight hundred. A uh, thousand ish. It depends. Your, if you want to go super budget, you're squeezing it. I think a few hundred bucks you can get it, but not those, not those like four five hundred, and then with with really outdated design and stuff like that. Because when people look at it, also they feel like, huh, what what is this? It looks ugly. So we are mm. emotional creatures, right? So it has to be nicely looking and stuff like that. At least it's clean. Then when it comes to rental, that is let's say your property, you have a million dollar property, you're expecting rental of maybe. Uh, seven, eight thousand, or ten thousand. Then your sofa, I would say, at least you need to provide the standard that is, you know, at least on par. Maybe uh seven, eight thousand sofa. Mm. You can't be using a one thousand plus sofa in in a rental. Tell me, hello, you're expecting a ten thousand? It doesn't make mm. sense to me. So in a yeah. in a investment perspective, think about your customer. Right? So how about people who advocate, do ah. uh, advocate for I don't know secondhand items? They might go to Shopee, Lazada to survey here and there, and then they choose to. Check out the price. I have friends that are doing they are doing that. Uh again, again, before you're doing that, right? Always, mm. always, always think about your time cost. So if you have the time to research and yeah, in fact you can find some good deals in like all this carousel, uh, Facebook marketplace. Uh, yes, uh I would say it's a good it's a good approach. If you have the time, do it. Now uh there are people also okay, uh buying from different shop or maybe should they stick to one particular shop to get all the things that they need for their house? Hmm. Mm. This one, uh, wow, it's a very, very tricky question. Why is that? I would say that 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 is not a governing principle, though. Whether you shop everything from one shop and things like that, because it depends on the shop also. It, if if that shop, so I have a very complete inventories and everything, the color, all this design that can match, you can create a very comfortable environment. Go ahead, why not? But seldom you can see these kind of shops. Uh. I mean, in Malaysia, I mean, with that kind of scale and stuff like that. Yeah. It's harder. So if you can, I would say yes. Again, because to save time, time is it's it's the ultimate money currency for us. Uh. So if you can save it, I would say go ahead. Okay. Now when it comes to the colors, right? Okay, I'm someone who is not so good with it. Uh, but I'm wondering what's a good tone color or something that is acceptable to paint the wall. Or do you guys recommend things like uh, wallpaper? For us, we like to use wallpaper. Uh, I would say because. Wallpaper, you, you you can you can play with a lot of pattern textures so that you can you can at least it's one of the most cost effective way to to make your unit looks very impressive. If you look at it, you know, I mean, in details, uh, if, let's say you look at like those show unit or hotel, right? Wow, they are they are indeed they are very luxur- luxurious, and very comfortable. Generally, when you look at their finishing, right, they are using wood panels. Uh, full height mirror to, to do all this furnishing, which costs a lot. So generally, mm. if you're talking about wallpaper and painting, texture paint a bit, these are all relatively uh, a bit more co- cost-effective way to make it look nicer. La. A lot of friends, right, when they know I was uh, working in Mikko, guys, then sometimes when they bought houses, they would say, hey, Jason, do you have any tips? Uh? I would say one of the biggest tips, right, to whether your house will look like a show unit, you know, very comfortable hotel, or look like just somewhat our friends' when your house, and we look at you know our relative, or uh-huh. you know an ordinary houses not so nicely done on it. It's color uh-huh. coordinated. Why is that? Because it looks like a Frankenstein. Like suddenly you got a bit of red color, then suddenly you got wow, it's like a rainbow in your house, man. That that is the <laughs> that is what makes a unit looks not Instagrammable. It's like ah, uh, why why is it like that? Mm. It is the general rule of color principle. Just two rules are uh. first thing, the composition percent percentage. 60, 30, and 10. So 60% is which is one of the color, then 30 and 10%. So this three. Now the second question is what color? I got three ma, right? I have three. So percentage. Yeah. Then what color do I use? Uh my advice is that always use 
neutral colors. There's so many things that uh, we learned from you today. So let's go for a short break first before we wrap up the discussion today. Stay tuned, don't go away. Okay, all right, we're back here with me, Ryan, your host, for Bujang and Broke. So Jason, uh, can we know what's the difference in cost when we do a three-bedder room in a condominium compared to a landed property? Again, again, because it, it it's just a general guideline because mm. it depends how luxury you want to furnish your house. Uh, based on my experience, if you wanted to do up a three-bedder condominium, I would say even if you DIY, it can easily touch 30, 30 mm. thousand, uh, which is quite saving really. A lot of DIY, a lot of you know, searching for good deals, good items and stuff like that. It can go up to 70 plus for a three-bedder. I mean, slightly more luxury, depends on the furnishing. But landed, uh, mostly it's left empty because you want to you know, carve out your own kitchen area and stuff like that. So that things alone and the number of air cons when you put it in is already easily 30,000. And that is just that two things. Mm -hmm. So Lander, I would say, right, if you really wanted to do it very nicely, nicely done with some, some of the designer look and stuff like that, I would say 60, 70 is minimal. It's very, very mm -hmm. minimal. Uh, it can go, I have seen like people are spending two, three hundred thousand, but that is for full design. That's a lot of money. <laughs> That's why Lander is not cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of money to use. So last question for you. What will be your advice to our audiences who just recently bought their home and looking for ways to decorate their home? Uh, nothing very fancy here. I would say one of the single most important thing is to define your, your goal first. Mm. Because I have seen a lot, I've seen really, really a lot of uh, youngsters, uh, especially young young working adults as well, because this is the time where they are buying a lot of properties. When we ask them, right, then they will tell you very common answers. You ask them, hey, so hey, well, you bought this unit now, what is it for? Are you trying mm. to stay in or are you investing? Ah, yeah, both lah. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> both? Hey, both? That means it's like telling me you want to buy a car, you want to buy a sports car or maybe a family MPV car. Ah, mm. Both lah then wow, it's very difficult to define. That is mm. where a lot of people mess up their, their, their spending. Because mm. when you buy, generally, why is that? Because let's say you buy for your own, own state. My thing is that as long as you're happy, then it's good enough. Just make it as happy as you are. Let's say I, I sleep a lot, then buy a very good bed, you know, it's good for your spine and stuff like that. Spend, mm. There's no guideline because you are the guideline. You are the boss. You are thinking. Yeah. But as if, let's say you are for investment, then understand your, if your tenant is cap is paying you a copy diam shop copy price, provide them a copy that is at that level. If you are charging a Starbucks price example, please provide something that is because you are already doing a business. You see, so that's why it's very, very different. First thing before, uh, I know a lot of people when it comes to renovation, right, they're very excited and they should really go, go online search, uh, download a lot of photos. Uh, that is not the first step. The first step is please ask ourselves, is it for own stay or is it for rental? Because that will break, that will, that will save you a lot of money, trust me. Awesome. There's a, there's a lot we learned from your sharing today. You know, we learned about the difference between uh, interior design, contractors, and also makeover and a DIY time cost, which is important. Like, do we have the time to do our research as well as the relationship involved in making this decision because those who have partners will have maybe difference in opinion and a lot more. So, you know, the show is coming to an end and we're, we're set, but you know, we'll see you again in the next episode to talk about how you can plan for your beautiful marriage celebration, especially brought to you by TVS. Now I'm Ryan, your host, Bujang and Broke, signing out.